First, let's take a look at the HPV virus itself. Human papillomaviruses are small, double-stranded DNA viruses. More than 100 HPV types have been identified, and they are differentiated by the genetic sequence of the protective outer shell, or capsid, made of a protein called L1. Inside this protective sphere is the viral DNA. About 40 types of HPV infect the mucosal epithelium and are categorized according to their association with cervical cancer. The HPV gene structure, or genome, is organized into three regions with eight overlapping open reading frames. Six early genes, E1 to E7, two late genes, L1 and L2, and one non-coding long control region, or LCR, containing a variety of elements which regulate viral replication and gene expression. The L1 and L2 genes encode the major and minor capsid proteins. Early genes regulate HPV viral replication. Now, let's look at the HPV infection process that could lead to cervical cancer. The typical site of an HPV infection is the transformation zone of the cervix. The cervix is the lower end of the uterus that extends into the vagina and becomes infected with HPV, typically following sexual contact. The epithelial lining of the cervix consists of stratified squamous epithelial cells, which are flatter and more specialized, or differentiated, the farther they are from the basement membrane. The basal cell layer houses the stem cells, which replicate and undergo cell division and eventually mature into squamous epithelial cells as they migrate to the upper epithelial layers. Microabrasions, or small tears, sometimes occur in the lining of the cervical epithelium. HPV infectious viral particles opportunistically invade the cervical epithelium and infect the basal layer cells. Viral HPV DNA replicates and is maintained in the dividing basal cells as low-copy episomal DNA. In rare instances, HPV DNA may incorporate into the host genome. The dividing basal cells begin to differentiate, and viral genome amplification and synthesis of the capsid proteins L1 and L2 occur in the upper layers of the epithelium. Papillomavirus infections are usually long-lived and the dividing basal cells provide a reservoir of infected cells for the overlaying virus-producing tissue. This strategy requires that the papillomaviruses have a faithful and robust mechanism to replicate and retain their episomal genomes in the nuclei of the dividing cells. When the basal cells are programmed to differentiate, it activates the HPV virus to initiate stages of the viral life cycle. This includes reactivating cell replication to produce multiple copies of viral DNA, forming the viral capsid, viral assembly, and finally, release of the virus. Let's look at the process of viral replication in more detail. To initiate this process, the first step is for the virus to express E6 and E7 viral genes. The protein product from this messenger RNA interferes with normal cell function and results in non-scheduled cell replication. These dysregulated cells are instructed to divide and produce the multiple copies of the HPV viral DNA. As a result of this non-scheduled replication, there is an accumulation of cells that disrupts the structural appearance of the epithelial tissue. What was once very ordered and highly structured now begins to look disorganized. The extension of this disorganization through the upper layers and to the surface of the epithelium is what is used to classify the degree of the lesion. Abnormal cell growth in the lower one-third of the basal epithelium is categorized as cervical intraepithelial neoplasia grade 1 or SIN1. When this extends up 
two-thirds of the way from the bottom basal epithelium, it is SYN2. Ultimately, when the abnormally dividing cells span more than two-thirds of this cell layer, it is referred to as SYN3. This is the immediate precursor to cervical cancer. Invasive cervical cancer ensues when the abnormal cells break through the basal membrane and infect the dermis. It is when this process becomes persistent that cervical cancer becomes the ultimate consequence. So, how does the HPV virus infection cause cervical cancer? Infection is initiated when the HPV virus penetrates the basal cells. Once the cell is infected, the viral capsid is shed and the circular HPV genome is shuttled into the nucleus of the cell. As mentioned earlier, the DNA from the HPV virus contains eight different genes. Early genes are designated as E and late genes are designated as L. In normally dividing cells, two gene products carefully regulate the process. These are the P53 and retinoblastoma, or PRB, proteins. The P53 is responsible for guarding the genome by initiating DNA repair, cell cycle checkpoints, and apoptosis. The retinoblastoma protein, or PRB, is responsible for preventing replication of damaged DNA in the cell and regulating the cell cycle. Upon E6 and E7 expression, the proteins that are encoded by the mRNA sequences interact with P53 and PRB, respectively. This is what results in the unscheduled cell replication and division. As these infected cells are forced to replicate, viral episomes are also replicated, producing more viral particles. Several important facts about HPV disease progression are worth considering. Because E6, E7 mRNA expression is needed at all points along disease progression, and tests targeting these genes cannot differentiate between progressing and regressing lesions. E6, E7 mRNA expression produces E6, E7 proteins, driving dysregulated cell replication. This results in an accumulation of HPV DNA plus cells. mRNA levels are difficult to reliably quantify and therefore presents a more challenging diagnostic target. On the other hand, the L1 gene has been used to reliably detect HPV DNA and distinguish one HPV genotype from another for over 25 years. Only DNA-based tests have been shown to have a long-term, low-risk period after a negative test. With many copies of HPV within one cell, and many infected cells within every patient sample, random and unpredictable HPV incorporation makes it impossible for the same 200 BP L1 gene region to be uniformly deleted. Research indicates that based upon histological status, DNA testing yields increasing positive results for patients across the spectrum of disease progression thus making DNA the gold standard for a cervical cancer screening assay.